So a few things first. December of 2020 was my first ever month in my life that I made over $10,000 in the month. Rewind real quick to uh, 2014 when I started this channel and I was bringing home a grand total of $1,600 a month. This, the amount that I made last month is how much I made in like half a year then. So this is banana pants and I'm extremely grateful and it actually took me quite a while to figure out what I was going to do with a lot of the extra money because that's, I haven't had to make that many choices <laughs> recently before. Usually I like just chuck everything at whatever my current big honking money goal is and uh, we move on. But this I actually was able to make some really interesting decisions. So yeah, I guess uh, check out how I dealt with the biggest income month I've ever had in my life. I made $13,584 in December of 2020 and over 8,000 of that was from Budget Girl. So I guess let's jump into the budget. <laughs> so uh, first of all, I made my normal salary $3,109.93 from Texas A&M and then we'll get into where all this money came from in a second. I also, uh, this is how much Jacob contributed to the household. All the bills are in my name um, and I own this house by myself, so he contributes. I have a whole article on why I charge my boyfriend rent down below. You should go check it out. It's a fun read, has a bunch of troll comments in it that uh, I uh, copied and put into the article for uh, juxtaposition purposes. <laughs> and uh, then I, got uh, $1,050 from my rental unit. A little crazy. So uh, these are the things Jacob pays and let's just get down into my budget. So obviously December was the uh, month of Christmas. So uh, the only thing I didn't have was lawn care. Uh, it didn't have to be mowed at all this month. Um, and then everything else was pretty normal. I did spend an extra $100 on groceries. It happens. <laughs> and uh, an extra $75 on restaurant. Once again, this was not a, uh, this was, I don't see this as a giant failure. I used to see overspending in a couple of categories as a giant failure, but it was Christmas, it was holidays, spending, I spent two weeks at home, spent one week, went back to Jackson. So there were a lot of extra groceries and a little more eating out and it was fine. I can, I can afford it, I anticipated it. If I wanted to, I could take that extra overage out of my Christmas sinking fund, but I was able to just kind of absorb it in my regular budget, so all is well. I also, as you can kind of see, had a lot of personal expenses this month, just uh, a lot of like little things, and ended up purchasing some stuff for the new house for the new year, and I had a few returns. By the way, uh, some of you guys have asked me how I do returns in my budget, especially if they came from a previous month. Well, I'm not gonna go open up a previous month's budget and mess with all the numbers to integrate a return. That doesn't make sense. So instead, I just put it into the current month's budget as a positive, AKA a negative in here because it calculates how much I've spent. So by putting it in as a negative, it uh, subtracts itself from the amount I've spent because that's some money that's gone back into my bank account and it all equals out. Oh, uh, my savings were all completely as normal, $930. That is 30% uh, of my income. My total expenses came out to right around $1,800, which is pretty normal for me. And then I invest 12% and that went to a Roth IRA and just a um, investing platform that I use. So total personal expenses for the month were uh, $3,107. And the way I've always done that is I try to budget all of my personal income off of, or my life, I try to budget my life off of my Texas A&M income. Uh, that is gonna change in the new year, so watch out for that video. I'm, uh, I'm switching stuff up a little bit just because it's starting to make more sense to um, budget off of my total life instead of just my day job. Speaking of not day jobs, let's go into budget girl here. So um, I made $2,418 off of YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. That's incredible. That is uh, more than I've made off of YouTube in a long, long time. In fact, uh, for most of this year, I was making like two or $300 off of YouTube. And so this is just really cool. Thank you so much for watching. And if you are watching this right now and you haven't subscribed yet or like this video, please go ahead and do so because 
I, I have to make the ask. It helps a lot and I appreciate it. The main source, <laughs> the main source of income off of this month was actually my Etsy shop. Uh, Buzzfeed featured me in an article a couple of months ago. I think it was end of October, beginning of November. Uh, my Etsy shop specifically, my budgets and my shop kind of blew up since then. The orders have kept coming. You guys have been loving these budgets and I'm actually, this is the budget that I sell at Etsy. So this one right here and the net worth tracker that you're gonna see. And these are the budgets that I use every single week, month, year that I've used to be able to pay off $33,000 worth of debt and build the wealth that I have. So you can get these and they're less than 10 bucks on Etsy. And uh, yeah, I, I make money off of that now. So that's fun, uh, completely passive income source. So I actually got paid by Etsy three times in December. So uh, the first for $2,052, the second for $1,245, and the third for uh, $1,459. So that's like five grand off of Etsy, which is so cool. And I'm super grateful and thankful for it. I do not anticipate that staying that high. It would be really cool if it did, but I don't anticipate getting that every single month. Uh, let's see, I made $39 off of Amazon Associates and $484 off of budgetgirl.com. Once again, completely abnormal month. Normally I make like 20 to 50 bucks, if that, off of my website ads. But uh, yeah, that was that was really fun. That was, that was a cool surprise. Also don't anticipate to get that again because there were some sticky, really annoying ads. Like there was a half page Google ad that would come down and stick so you could only see the bottom. I did not install that and I actually have had to pay someone to get rid of that. I'm just, that's not worth the money to me to make it a completely uh, terrible user experience for you guys to go read those articles and get those freebies and check out budgetgirl.com. I would rather take less money and have it be a place where you guys can go get awesome stuff. So also go check that out. <laughs> uh, I made $266.25 off of my Budget Girl merch. So that is the new line from Teespring of all of these designs that I put out. The girls just wanna have funds, maybe spreadsheets will help better every day and a few other really cool kind of just fun money designs for people like us that just enjoy this, who have it a part of their lives. I absolutely don't want anyone to go purchase them if it's going to cause you any sort of financial hardship. If you cannot afford them, don't worry about it. They're gonna be up there for a while. I'm not pressing for this. I also have yet, um, this 266 is the first payout from this and I spent maybe $400 on samples uh, just to make sure that like the quality was good, the printing was good, all the colors and everything like that. So I haven't actually net a profit on this yet but it is kind of a fun thing. So, and we have masks and like sweatshirts and stuff like that. It's kind of fun. And mugs. I made $750 off of the morning brew video that I did back in October. That was a sponsorship pay. And then I made $19 off of an affiliate for my newsletter, which I've been recommending like crazy. Uh, if you guys get it, <laughs> you can sign up below. I do a twice a month newsletter that has like freebies and fun stuff and making sure that you haven't missed any videos or blog posts. And I changed it to a new newsletter service. I was paying over a thousand dollars a year for ConvertKit, which is just bananas because this is not something that makes me money. Um, <laughs> and I switched to Flowdesk, which is so much prettier. Like it's a much better system. It's only $19 a month. So I also have an affiliate off of that. So I've recommended it to a fellow creator and she bought it. So I made $19 off of that, which totals out to $8,735.39. That's so amazing. All right, so now let's look at the expenses for Budget Girl because it did, um, I did have over $2,000 worth of expenses. Some of these are for the new year. Some of them are just for normal. So internet, Canva, Flowdesk, uh, my newsletter person who does my newsletter for me, video editor. I got a new little tripod. I uh, sent some samples of merch to some friends of mine who have always supported me. And also I gave holiday bonuses to my virtual assistants, the people that help me be able to do Budget Girl every month. And for the longest time I did all of this by myself, but that's really just not sustainable. I do have a day job. So I have been outsourcing my newsletter and some video editing, like this video I'm editing myself, most videos I edit myself, but I do have some that I outsource to a really wonderful editor named Sahil, and he did my entire Duplex Diary series, which I could never have done. 
ever. It was an amazing job. And so I wanted to give them just a little holiday bonus for as a thank you because, and they deserve so much more, but as a thank you to, uh, for just being a part of kind of my team and allowing me to lean on them a little bit in my business. I also gave a, a gift to a regular client of mine and um, paid a web person a deposit for some new web page work that's going to be happening in 2021 on Budget Girl. Very excited about that. I also prepaid for some Pinterest management services and honestly this like knife in the heart but one of my goals is to get more traffic to budgetgirl.com so that I can put better ads on the site and make more money. <laughs> I know I need to do and I want to do but I don't have time and so I prepaid for three months of a new Pinterest management service. We're gonna see how that goes. I really hope it goes well. I really hope it goes well and it will be worth the money. It's hard, hard to pay that money though. <laughs> if it's gonna be worth that cost or not is something I have to calculate. I also paid a freelance writer for two articles for budgetgirl.com that are not out yet, but they will be soon. And I ordered some more merch samples for some potential new stuff. And then I saved a little bit of money, $119 for quarterly estimated taxes that has to come out. And so my total expenses for Budget Girl were a little over $2,000, making my take home, because I am a sole proprietorship, uh, $6,671. I also in December had some Christmas type expenses, specifically like pet sitting and uh, some other stuff. So I uh, put that just in an outside box and that totaled $250 added to the $966 that I spent on Christmas type stuff last month. That was a total of $1,217.21. And I took all of that from my Christmas savings, my sinking fund, <laughs> I saved $400 every month. And there's still about like six or $700 in there. Um, but yeah, pretty much exactly on par with what I was saving this year for Christmas. Another reason I love sinking funds because if all of that had to go into my budget, it would have just blown out everything for the month. Okay, so here is the uh, totaler box, and I had $124.19 left from my regular budget, and then I had $6,671 left from Budget Girl, making my total take home after those uh, $67.95. So, first off, I decided to finish my house emergency fund, which is something I've been working on since May. And I wanted to have $10,000 in a specific emergency fund for my duplex. That is for repairs, uh, vacancies, anything like that. It seemed like a nice number and I don't want to have to dip into my personal emergency fund in case something happens with the house. So that 1971.37 finished it. And that was, that was one of my goals. I didn't know if I was going to be able to finish it in 2020, but I was. So that's my, that was my next big honking money goal which means, <laughs> well, we'll get to it in a second. So um, I also decided to put $2,000 into my house in my duplex checking account because I will be turning over my rental unit early this year and I want to do some renovations to it. So uh, more videos on that upcoming um, when that happens. So that's exciting. And then I decided to put $2,000 into a budget girl account for taxes for future things. Normally what I've done is just never spent more than I made in a month on Budget Girl, even when I was like investing into the business. And then I, I just never spent more than I made. And I would like just a little bit of wiggle room in case I don't have like expenses line up, that kind of thing. And then with the final $824.43, I decided to throw that at my next big honking money goal, which I've mentioned before on this channel, I want another real estate investment property. And that might take the uh, form of a duplex or a quadplex, or it might take the form of a little bit of land that I could put like a vintage travel trailer on. I don't know yet, but this is, this is the first investment into what will be the next BG properties or the next kind of real estate venture that I go on. And I, and I honestly don't know what it is yet. I have a lot of ideas. I have a lot of things that I want to do eventually. And it's going to come down to what I can find, um, the right timing, all of that. And I'm excited. And if you want to hear more kind of about all the different avenues that I might decide to go into, let me know below. I can do a whole video on that. And I do have some 
articles on budgetgirl.com talking about like alternative living properties and all that jazz. I also have a new roundup of everything I've done my whole entire duplex journey thus far, my entire baby real estate investing path and all of the numbers and everything. So you can check out that article below as well. So let's get into how this really amazing month transferred into growth into my overall net worth. And I, I really enjoy this section because your month isn't a full financial picture. My full financial picture is my net worth and how that it's grown this month. And so this is actually closing out the year. So this is my entire financial year in review. And we'll get down into the very bottom and see how much my net worth has grown for this month and this year, which is exciting. So uh, at the very beginning here, uh, these are my checking account balances for personal and for the duplex. I don't have a plain checking account for Budget Girl. I probably need to create one. And that totals $8,000. I finished off my emergency fund last month or two months ago. And so that has $10,000. And now my duplex emergency fund is $10,000. That just is going to help me sleep better at night, knowing that I have that much cash piled up just in case life decides to be like, pow, pow. <laughs> and then a long-term savings account, which is just money that I put in. I just put in a little bit of money every single month. And I have since the beginning of my debt-free journey, <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to use that for. Um, I just pretend it doesn't exist. All right. And then sinking funds. So these are meant to uh, be used eventually. And it's to offset monthly expenses for things that cost that I know that are going to come up. So total of my sinking funds is $7,702 and my total cash savings and sinking funds, which is just cash and savings, is $38,305, which is a lot. Um, that's a lot of money just to be sitting in savings at, you know, 0.6% interest, though I do have a interest bearing, I have a high yield <laughs> savings account. I have many high yield savings accounts, um, though I will have a couple that I recommend down below. It's not high right now and you can't really get a super high one, but at the very least, I'm not paying the bank every month to keep my money there. And if you are, change that in 2021, please. <laughs> so let's move on to my investments. So first of all, retirement, between my teacher's retirement system, now I'm not a teacher, but I work for a university, and so that's the retirement system that I have, has 12,000 in it and a little bit in some other accounts. My uh, Roth IRA has $9,249 in it, totals out to $33,746 in retirement, which I am about to turn 33, so I'm going to try to bump that soon, but it is, I'm getting there. I'm working on it. I have a $1,120 in other investments that aren't retirement, and that totals out to $34,866 in total investments. Also, total liquid assets. So at any point, I could liquidate all of these. Yes, I would incur massive fees if I liquidated any retirement assets, but it's just kind of a class of liquid assets, cash savings investments. I have $73,171 in liquid assets, which is very, very cool. Once again, this net worth tracker, which is my new favorite thing in the world, is at my Etsy shop. Or you can also shop at budgetgirl.com shop. So let's get into non-liquid assets. So specifically, my house. My duplex is worth um, $240,000. And I also have a car that's worth about $6,000. So my total property assets is $2,000, is $246,000. Now I do have, and my, and my total assets all together is $319,000, which is uh, really freaking cool. So um, I do have a debt now, I have a mortgage and I owe, and I owe $223,699 on it. It looks like I didn't pay on it this month, but I did. Um, it just comes out on like the third and I checked this, I logged everything on the uh, second. And that is my only debt. So that is how much I owe in debt. And that makes my total net worth, which is your assets minus your liabilities or what you own minus what you owe, $95,000. $472. How freaking, that's so cool. I'm so close to $100,000 net worth. And I've been told by every person who knows finances in my entire life that your first 100,000 is your hardest. It uh, gets a lot easier after that because you own things that are making you money and growing in value. So it just, it compounds more, compounding interest. 
eighth wonder of the world. So that is a net worth change of $7,591 this month. And that is a year to date change from January 2020 to December 2020 of $31,484, which during this cluster F of a year is amazing. I will take it. 10 out of 10. Go me. I've been watching a lot of like TikTok self-hype videos and they're, they're embarrassing, but I feel like it's working somewhere like deep inside where I'm like, hype yourself up. Yes, you did this. It's awesome. You, I'm used to hyping. I try to hype you guys. I don't always do it for myself. I tend to be too hard on myself. So hyping myself like this, if you want to hype me back. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of, of that. December, 2020 was a really amazing month. Uh, things started to go upwards on YouTube. Things started to go upwards on Etsy. Um, it seemed like things were going to start to do better in 2021. And then the sixth happened, but I still have hope. I still have hope for 2021. Uh, we're going to do this. We're going to be fine. We're going to be better. It's going to be an interesting year. And, uh, I hope I will make some other major money moves this year. So tell me how your 2020 went as far as finances or how your December went. I, I'm really excited. I was able to buy a house this year and, and move and survive a market crash and the apocalypse. And also it's snowing outside. So that doesn't bode well for this Mississippi girl, but still, <laughs> I, um, I'm really excited for next year and I'm excited to uh, show you guys how, how things keep going in 2021 for me. I will see you next time. Make sure to check out the links below if you want to see more from me. And I hope your 2021 is going good. Bye.